air fried hamburgers in two different devices, the Ninja Foodie and the Instant Vortex Plus air frying oven. We're also going to use the meter, and that's because of something I learned recently about what the USDA says. So we're going to use that. I'm also going to show you some tips on why I use that type of hamburger for air frying, but also it's not bad for the grill or anything, and I'll explain why in just a minute. I'm John Sanders. Welcome to In the Kitchen with Jelly 007. Let's get this started. Okay, so for my point on hamburgers, and I mean air frying or the grill or in a skillet, anything, you never, you'll find, everybody that cooks a really good hamburger will recommend don't overwork the meat. Well, that's what a chub, if you ask what I, this is what I call a chub, and this is 80-20, it's fine chuck. All right, well, a lot of the stores you buy it at, this is how it comes in, except it's 10 pounds. I had them cut this one in half. So a lot of them, all they do is take this, cut it open, run it through their grinder where it's got that fresh ground look, and they put it on those square packs, and it's nothing but this. I'm not saying all of them do that. I'm just saying I know some of them do it. My point is, you can take a knife, and you can cut uniform round hamburgers all the way down through here that, that, that'll cook the same. They're all the same, you know, pretty much as long as you hit pretty close with a knife, they're going to cook pretty close the same. If there's a drawback, they kind of get that manufactured look. Well, if you don't like that, press them a little bit with your hand, you know. Don't just leave them in that round uh, form. But I'm going to tell you, overworking hamburger meat is the worst thing you can do to it. And a lot of people buy it and they do all this. And plus, people want to work uh, seasonings in? No. I, well, my opinion, no. Salt. That's it. You just sprinkle a little salt on the patty. And like I said, if you want to press it down where it looks more hand squoze, I call it, <laughs> then you do that. But there's nothing wrong with just leaving them just like this. They'll cook uniform. You can cut them just like this. You buy it like this. I had it cut. It was a 10-pound chub. I had them cut it in half. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cook probably four hamburgers tonight because that's, it'll work good in these two ovens or these two cookers. And then I'll go ahead and cook these, cut these up, and I'll freeze them. And then I'll have frozen patties. But that's a different story, and I'll get into that maybe on a different show. The main point is, about what I recommend is about a three-quarter inch patty all the way down through there. And if you want them to look real, and I'm getting way too long on this, I'll be right back. I'm going to get those cut up. I'll see you in a second. Okay, so here are the burgers we're cooking tonight in, in each oven, and I'll show you 6-8 on that one. Uh, this one is 6-7, that one is 6-7, and this one is 6-8. So they're pretty much identical. Now I want to show something. This is what I mean by the grain. I haven't worked that meat at all, and I'm going to tell you something. When you're eating that hamburger, no matter how you cook it, You'll know that. That, to me, is one of the best ways to prepare a hamburger to cook. Now, like I said, you can squeeze it down <clears throat> and make it look more hand padded. I got 11 hamburgers out of that five pounds. I'm going to freeze those right there and uh, use them later. But tonight, we're cooking those four right there. So let me get some of that started, and I'll be right back. Okay, so for uh, step two of this... I'm using these because here's the truth, and you can see the temperatures are crazy because I got them in my hand, but because I read on USDA, and I, I've, maybe I, you know, I wanted to make sure before I did this on a video, and I found out something. If you don't grind your own hamburger meat, you need to take it to 160, and every site, uh, including meter, if you go to there, set up a cook, and you go to ground hamburger meat, it's looking for 160 according to the USDA. I, I, now, if you grind your own, you can take some special precautions and, and, and do it lower than that. But for our purposes tonight, and because I've never, although I've cooked them in the Ninja, I've never taken one that I know of, maybe I have, to 160. So I'm going to use these probes, and we're going to see how well they do. And, I, and you can see 
it's a hamburger. It's not going to be, it's not the ultimate situation. First of all, I got to get it to this line or I'm supposed to. And so I got to get, I'm going to be a little short on that. So long story short, I'm fixing to insert these probes. I'm going to preheat the Ninja and the Instant Vortex, and we're going to get this show on the road. So y'all hold up. Okay, so I'm going to let both of them run at 375, this one on air fry and this one on air crisp for like 10 minutes to make sure they're completely, both of them, all their, I've got the trays in here and the trays in here. That's just to make sure they're both <clears throat> completely at 375. Now to touch back on this 160, this is the USDA's website. And if you look right here, ground meats, it, it discusses everything else difference and you can look it up but it says ground meat 160 and I have kind of always known that I, I know that any meat that is exposed to oxygen or air is where the bacteria can grow and that's what I've always heard and I'm not a, a FDA guy but it, in, in other words when you grind the meat air is exposed to all of it so you have to compensate for that or you have to cook the temps that you would normally just go on the outside of a steak or a chop, you got to take that whole hamburger or ground meat to that. So anyhow, I'm going to hush on that. You can look it up and see what you think, but I just want to make sure everybody stays safe. That's what we're trying to be. Don't, don't get hurt. We're just trying to cook some supper. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay, so this may get <laughs> a little tricky, but what I'm going to do is open this up. They've both been preheating for a long time. I'm going to set that right there where the probe was got room to move and that is probe number two by the way we're going to close that one and then i'm going to immediately hit cancel because i'll start it back up in just a minute and here's the way i have the ninja set up and that's an air frying basket with that stand i'm not really sure what they call that one but this will be probe number one i gotta turn it like that and we'll put that burger there and that one i like to have a little space between them like the other side but that, that'll work and you can see they are there and we're going to close this one and turn it off also now make sure you can see everything i'm doing i'm going to hit air fry for three set at 375 where it was for we're going to say 10 minutes. You know what? It really doesn't matter. We're going by temp. So I got to get that to 10. <laughs> it's a little tricky. But, well, it's trickier than I thought. But there's 10. We're going to do the same thing here. I'll hit air crisp. I'll take it to 375 for 10 minutes. And we'll hit start here and start here. And... We will see what they look like in just a few minutes. And plus, I'm going to be using a thermopen. I mean, it, it's it's a useful. It's really hard to get one of those other probes in the center of a hamburger, obviously. But we can monitor it. I'm going to light that part up, get the uh, the meter going. So, y'all hold up. I'll get that going. I'll be right back. Okay. And and for the record, this one's showing uh, nine minutes. But when I closed that back, it reset the timer and it tried to do its preheat, which it should have been 375 without a problem. We're actually at about uh, three and a half minutes, and this one's still saying nine. But you can see in there, it's uh, starting to brown already. So, you know, can't see in the Ninja, one of the, one of the drawbacks to it, but we can lift that lid and look in just a minute, but we'll wait a minute before we do that. You can see we're 84 and 85 already, so it didn't take long. And you can see, they don't look bad. And I wish I could get better light on, even at the, you can see the oil at the bottom, but maybe you can't, too much for But I'm going to have to reset both timers because this one's at 16 seconds. We're at 128 and 119. So as soon as this one ends, in fact, I don't think you can add time. I guess you can. So we're just gonna go to 10, or you know what? It doesn't matter where I go to because I'm looking for temp right here. I want one. I'm going to say 152, 155 or some number like that before I turn them off. That way the, the carryover cooking will take them to 160. Well, I was wrong. It cut off. So what we're going to do, 
I'm going to turn it all the way off. In fact, let's look at them. Let's look at them. So I may, this may be confusing and may be hard to do, but let's see what they look like. Oh, they look excellent too. There's nothing wrong with them. Now, I don't flip burgers. I don't flip them in the Ninja. I never have, and I don't think I need two in here either. If you look, they look good. And I mean, yeah, I just don't think they need it. And we're climbing temps really quick. So I'm going to start this one again, if you can see what I'm doing. Air crisp, 375. Whoops, I hit time. Just hit off. All right, we're going to do air crisp, 375. And we're just going to let it go 20 minutes. We don't care what time. We don't even care what time's there. We're going by this. I'll be back. Okay, so I'm going to have to add time here too. I should have set them up for 20 minutes. I don't know why I didn't. But if you look over here, we're right at around 12 minutes total right now. So we're just going to open that, close it back. I'm going to hit air fry 375. I'm going to say, you know, I don't care what time, just get it started again. And we're back on, back running. And I, let's see, they turn the light on, or maybe it was on. Uh, and that, it's already preheated. That's what it's telling me to do is add the food. So, you know, like I said, but they look good. They look real good. But we're waiting on this. So, y'all hold, y'all bear with me. We'll get it done in just a second. Okay, so as you can see, at somewhere around 13 minutes, right around 13 minutes, we're at 153. I'm going to let it hit 155, and I'm going to raise that lid where it'll cut off. Uh, the instant vortex is at 138, 139, but you can see how fast it's climbing. So we're going to raise this lid, and I'm going to put a thermal pin in it right now. So let's see what they look like, and this is going to be... A little harder to do than it sounds because I'm going to need one hand <laughs> to run the camera that's probably not set up exactly right but we're going to do it all right I got to get where you can see the camera I mean the the uh, thermo pen and if you know if you heard my stories or if you've watched my videos I drag it back through real easy so we're 163, 158, 151, 149. I see 146. The lowest number I saw was 146. So we're gonna let it run just a minute longer. As a matter of fact, you can see how far it's climbed since I turned it off. I mean, uh, there's a lot of carryover cooking going on. We're gonna let it go, I'm gonna call it to 16 minutes and then we're gonna pull it out and I'm gonna put it on that plate and we'll do better uh, we'll use a the thermopin on it better than that then so be right back Okay, so we're at 16 minutes. I feel positive. These are gonna make any temperature honestly that I want It's at 164, but you know you never like I said with a, with any cap time of a any type of Thermometer it's rather hard to hit the center of whatever you're cooking And that's gonna be real tricky with that hanging out of there, but we're gonna try it I think I about got it. There we go. And I'm going to do the same thing with this. We're going to take them both out. And we're going to let them rest just a minute right here. And there they are. If I can get it to uh, cooperate, if I can get the camera to cooperate, right there they are. I'm going to turn this one off for now. If I need it again, I don't think I will. But if I do, we'll turn it back on. We're at 155 here. So I'm fixing to pull the ones out of here. And you can see what they look like, hopefully, with the light. And they look good. So, 155. I'm going to thermopin them right quick. Let's see what we get from the side. And I may have to shove it around because I can't, I don't have anything to hold it with. I see 161. And whoo, that's really, really warm. But we're, that's good right there. One, I'm going to pull it back right here and see what I get. I don't have a clue whether you can see that or not, but hopefully you can. 165, 4, 3, 2, 1, 158, 157, 157. That, the carryover will have no problem with doing that right there. So, I'm going to get these out of here too, and that, that door is a little warm. I'll move that right there. And, uh, I may have to do some other gathering some items up. 
we're going to slide this out. In fact, I can take this out. So, with that right there, let's see if you can see this. I'm going to put that right there and that right there. And you can see the bottom, it captured it all. It, is, it wasn't even a problem. I mean, it's, there's plenty of room for plenty more. You could have had more hamburgers, in other words, with plenty more grease, and I am making a mess. But I'm going to set this down. We're going to let these rest for just a minute, and we're going to take thermopin readings on both of those again, and uh, then we're going to eat them. Hang on. Cut that off because I don't want that cooking anymore. But like I said, just let those rest a minute, and I'm going to put them on a bun and eat one of them. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got black rind hoop cheese, which is, if you ask me, the ultimate. And you don't need to put it on while it's in the uh, cooker. You can, I'm going to put, put it on one of them, on each one of them, because I'm probably going to eat both of these. And uh, you don't have to put it on and then put heat on it. it it'll, it'll melt it enough. I mean, now this cheese has been out for several hours. It's not cold out of the refrigerator. But uh, you, if you had left it in there and put it on there, it would have been a little better, but that'll melt it. It will. I'm going to I'm gonna get it on a bun, and we're going to let it sit a few more minutes and get that temp reading. Okay, so they're at 147 after about, I don't know, four or five minutes and 150. And let's just look. I mean, they hit 160 on that meter, so I'm good with them. There's no doubt. There's 150 in the center, and then 150, 149. We'll check this one also. And it is 154, 155, 151. And they hit 160. So, I mean, that's really all you need. Once they hit 160, I think, if my understanding is correct, they're good. But you can see they're falling fairly fast, but you don't want to eat them at 160 degrees. Or I don't. And you can see they're melting that cheese. That hoop cheese is, is probably the best thing I've ever put on a hamburger. And that's what we're fixing to do. I'm going to set two of these hamburgers up on these buns right here. And I am hungry. So, y'all hold up. And I'll show you what one looks like on the inside. Okay, so I, instead of getting them mixed up, I decided to cut them right here so you can see. Now, I agree. 160 is a little, a little hot for me. But be honest with you. There one is, and that hit 160. That's where the probe was. And then here's the vortex. And it's the same temp, so it should look the same, and it does. And all those hamburgers need, I promise you, is some salt. <laughs> okay, so by the time I'm finishing <laughs> both of these, I may put a little ketchup, but there won't be much. But let me tell you, you can tell by just tasting that meat by itself, but take my word, that hoop cheese, uh, it makes it even better. And what I'm talking about, the grain, this is, I could eat this. I mean, it is excellent. I don't know how you beat that. That's a, that's a hamburger at home. That rivals a lot of restaurants. I say that a lot. <laughs> I really think it does. A hoop cheese will make anything better. Thank y'all for watching my video. I probably got this one a little longer than I meant to, too. But I wanted to explain that 160. There's a couple of things that I didn't know. Honestly, I've never got hamburgers. I've never looked for 160. Now I know, though. So, this won't be safe. And I still believe in a thermopin. Or a, an instant read thermometer. Thank y'all for watching, subscribing, sharing. I love y'all all. Y'all fix your hamburger in one of your air fryers. Any kind will do, by the way. But you see what these two will do. Y'all come back to see me. Have a good night. Oh, by the way, I'll put my big head over here for y'all to subscribe. Please touch it and do that. And same thing with one of them videos I always put. Watch that too. Love y'all all. Bye-bye.